Hi, welcome to this episode of Whiteboard Wednesdays. We finished up our series on monitors and now we're going to talk about load balancing algorithms. And so, you know, essentially a load balancing algorithm is a core function that gets your traffic from Big IP to a selected server. And how it does that is it uses a variety of different algorithms uh, available to you on the Big IP system. And there are some different options available, whether you're on the local traffic manager and some of the other product modules. And then a global traffic manager has a whole bunch of them that aren't available on the other products. And we'll get into those later in the series. But we have on the local traffic manager, we have the static algorithms, which don't need any outside information to, to make a decision. And we'll talk about two of those today uh, with uh, round robin and ratio, actually uh, least uh, uh, connections as well. It's looking at the connection table. Uh, to make those um, determinations. Um, but then we also have, uh, when we get into GTM, we'll have a tiered decision that's made and it, it first makes a decision between pools at the wide IP and then it makes a decision within the pool. Um, and so uh, some things to consider with your algorithms when you're selecting them. Obviously, a, um, uh, an advanced algorithm is going to require uh, additional resources, it's going to affect performance, not necessarily just on your big IP, but also your servers. And, and so there's uh, considerations there that we'll talk about along the way. And then there's also the concept of node versus member. And so a node, if you look at the, the, uh, how a, a node is represented on the big IP, it's an IP address. So 172.16.1.1 is a node. And then if I had um, one or more services on that, then that might be fractioned or you know, uh, partitioned off of that node. I might have a port 80 member and I might have a port 22 member or a 21 member or a 443 member. And so if all of those are different pool members, then I can load balance differently to this node um, if I select an algorithm that is a member. And so it will, it will distribute all the traffic based only on that port uh, between pool members instead of just the IP. And as we go through the different algorithms, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay, so like Jason said, there's a lot of different load balancing algorithms available, and certainly the Big IP offers a wide variety of algorithms. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is, as you have this whole host of, of uh, algorithm options, you want to choose the one that does the job correctly. Uh, but you don't need to overdo it. Uh, and Jason mentioned that, you know, there's performance implications on either the big IP or maybe the back-end servers, that kind of thing, if you choose one that kind of overdoes things. So with that in mind, the first one I'm going to mention is the round robin uh, algorithm. And it is the most basic uh, algorithm that, that there is, essentially. It's, it's uh, you know, as, as traffic comes in, the big IP is going to, um, it's just going to give the, the next connection to the, to the next server, to the next back-end server. So in this case, a connection comes in, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go here to the first uh, server, the next one, the second one's going to go here, third, fourth, fifth, you guys get the idea. So it literally is just going to round robin all the way through. This is not a, uh, like I said, not an intelligent algorithm. It's, a, it's what we we'll call a static algorithm. It doesn't require any kind of outside information. Um, but it can be very useful if it's, um, you know, if, if there are uh, services um, or, or servers that you don't necessarily want to want to manage uh, a lot of things or, or um, you know, uh, you, you don't need it to be intelligent, then the round robin could be a, a, a great option for you. So, so anyway, so the round robin's out there and you can uh, choose that uh, as one of your options. Yeah, and I'll say too with, the, with round robin, especially servers that are, are equally matched, all, this, all the, uh, uh, the compute uh, is equal and none of the functions running on those applications uh, is differentiated, then there's no reason to do anything other than, than send them in a round robin fashion. And uh, I'm gonna talk about ratio now. And so ratio adds just a slight bit of complexity. And again, you can do ratio by the node or you can do ratio by member. We're gonna show a member example here. And so if this is one pool of servers, so this is, say this is pool one and um, I have different uh, life cycle of my hardware replacement. And so this is my original server uh, and it doesn't have very much compute power because it's at the end of its life cycle. Uh, this new one has three times the compute um, uh, capacity of, of this first server. So I'm going to set a ratio of three on this server, whereas my original server that is in a life cycle only gets a ratio of one. And then of course a uh, mid life cycle here 
Um, this guy's somewhere in the middle. And so if I'm going to do a ratio of one and two and three, when I send traffic from Big IP, first connection will come here. So connection one, and then connection two, and then connection three, like round robin. But the next cycle through, when I get my fourth connection, he's going to come to this guy and my fifth connection over here to server three. And then again, because he gets three times the, the connections, my sixth one will come here. And then when I get my seventh connection, boom, I'm right back over here. And that's seven, and then eight, and nine. And then before I get too low here on the board again, we'll go 10, 11, and 12, and so on. And, and so, you know, ratio is not super complex. Uh, but gives you the ability to differentiate either your compute power or how many services you're running on those applications. Uh, you may have uh, this, this application, whereas it's running in the same uh, pool, does other backend processes that these two don't have to handle. And so, you know, that's a, a use case for, for ratio. Sure. And, and one other note, you can obviously set the ratio to whatever weights you want them to be. They don't have to be one, two, three. They could be, you know, two, two, four, two, two, five, whatever. So, uh, and then the traffic gets balanced accordingly. Okay, so the last load balancing algorithm we're going to talk about today is uh, called least connections. And what this does is the big IP keeps a connection table and it knows how many connections each backend server has at that time. And whichever one has the least connections, that's who gets the next connection. So it's, uh, it, the, it's, it's one of those, you know, the name kind of describes uh, what it does. So we have three backend servers here, for example, and let's say this guy has two connections and this guy has five connections and this guy has six connections. Uh, well, the next, the next connection that comes in is going to go here. So this is going to be, he's going to have three now, and then he's going to have four, and then he's going to have five, and then uh, all the way up to, well, and then this guy's going to get six, and then he's going to get six, and then once they're all balanced, um, then at that point, it's, the, it's the, actually the, uh, the lowest IP, I believe, is the way it uses that. We'll, uh, we'll double check on that. Uh, but the lowest IP, it, it just uh, it takes that and, and uses that as the next connection. So let's say that's this one, for example. So he'll get seven and then seven and then uh, seven and then it'll just go. And actually, in this case, it's kind of turned into a little round robin. But some of these connections may drop off in the meantime. So you can, uh, you can see that this one keeps all the connections uh, balanced and, and uh, you know, ensures that all of your backend servers have, a, have a, uh, the same number of connections as much as possible. So um, there's, there's, uh, there's one it, uh, issue, I guess, with this. I'll, I'll call it an issue. There's a concept of persistence, which we'll get into later. Um, but if you persist connections to any one of these servers, then you can run it into some uh, issues with, uh, with least connections. Um, we'll dig into the details of that later, but basically persistence, what that does is it brings you back to the same backend server. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons why you would want to do that, some reasons you would not want to do that, uh, but just keep that in mind and, and stay tuned for the uh, discussion on persistence later. I'm going to pull an audible and I'm going to discuss it now. <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> nice. So yeah, persistence, the problem you get into, whether it's ratio or any of the other advanced ones or least connections, where you might have... Uh, you're, you're looking to see, are my pools balanced the way that I expect them to be? And I might have two connections here, and I might have like 35 on this one, and maybe 34. And I'm thinking, why in the world mm -hmm. do I not have more connections on this server? And it could be that all of your connections that are active at that point uh, have a persistence record, like John has uh, mentioned a little bit ago, is that you know, no new connections are coming in at this point, but everybody else is persisted. And so if a new connection comes in that happens to already be persisted in one of these servers, they're going to continue to come into these servers. Mm -hmm. And so if, uh, if no new connections are coming in that don't belong to a persistence record, that guy's going to get stuck low. And so you can dump the connection table if, if the application doesn't have a need uh, for persistence, although if that's the case, why are you running persistence anyway? Right. But you know, that, that's something you can check as well with your applications. But um, sometimes you'll look at your, your numbers and they're, they're skewed and they're not the way they should be. And persistence plays a role in that. Yep, absolutely. So yeah, so persistence is going to trump the load balancing algorithm. Uh, so yeah, so you know how I just mentioned, stay tuned for the persistence discussion. It just happened. So thanks for staying tuned. <laughs> All right, good stuff. So, uh, so hey, so those are, those are three different load balancing algorithms uh, that we've mentioned today. There's round robin, there's ratio, and there's least connections. There's a whole bunch of other ones, and we're going to get into those in future uh, uh, 
Whiteboard Wednesday videos. So stay tuned out there. These things can get pretty complex. Like Jason mentioned at the beginning, you've got LTM uh, load balancing algorithms. There's GTM stuff. There's iRules that can play a part in all this. So you can get really crazy with this stuff and it gets pretty exciting. So uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for watching this Whiteboard Wednesday and we will see you guys out there in the community. <laughs>